Hello everyone. I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay in the series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination. Today we'll fly through the topic of surface winds. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off. Wind blowing below height of 3000 feet or below 1 km are called surface winds. Surface wind plays a critical role during takeoff and landing phase of flight. Before departure and before every landing, air traffic controllers report surface wind to the pilots so that they can judge the effect of wind on aircraft performance and be prepared to counter it. Generally, wind is reported with respect to true north on charts and graphs, but surface wind is reported with respect to magnetic north and not true north. During takeoff and landing phase of flight, wind direction is reported in terms of clock code with respect to the runway in use. For example, if runway in use is 09. which means runway magnetic direction is 090 wind is blowing from direction 120 at speed of 5 knots atc will report it as 1 o'clock 5 knots this is done for easier and better appreciation of effect of winds during takeoff and landing for the benefit of pilots surface wind is measured by an instrument called anemometer which measures wind speed and direction this instrument is placed at a height of 10 meter or 33 feet above ground level and in an obstruction free area at airport it is mandatory to have at least one wind sock which is easily visible from ground and from air for visual assessment of surface wind direction and speed by pilots plotting of wind speed versus time would be called anemograph wind direction is always reported as the direction from which wind is blowing from and not where it is going to wind is said to be veering when the direction changes clockwise and backing when its direction changes anti clockwise gust is local increase in wind speed by more than 10 knots lasting for more than 1 minute so having discussed some facts about surface winds now let us understand how is surface wind different from other winds like geostrophic wind or gradient wind geostrophic wind blows above friction layer that is above 3000 feet above ground level straight and parallel to isobars under the influence of pressure gradient force and coriolis force and gradient wind blows above friction layer parallel to curved isobars under the influence of pressure gradient force coriolis force and centrifugal force mathematical modeling adopted for calculation and prediction of geostrophic wind will not work for surface wind since surface wind at a given place would be altered modified and affected by presence of terrain obstructions building relief features water bodies etc So wind blowing at ground level up to the friction layer which is 3000 feet is called surface winds. Surface wind would be weaker as compared to geostrophic wind at which is blowing at higher altitude since friction with terrain feature relief and buildings will reduce the speed of the wind. The reduction in wind speed will also reduce the coriolis force since coriolis force is directly proportional to wind speed. This will cause pressure gradient force and coriolis force to be out of balance and the net effect of this reduction in coriolis force is that coriolis force will not be able to turn the wind blowing from high pressure area to low pressure area by 90 degrees and will not be able to make it blow exactly parallel to isobars so wind will blow across isobars at some angle and some region resemblance would be maintained for the basic understanding that the wind should blow from high to low pressure area Let us understand it with the help of an example. You need to keep three basic facts in mind. First is that wind starts to move from high pressure area to low pressure area and the differential force between pressure values between two places is called pressure gradient force. Closer the spacing between isobars, higher the pressure gradient force and stronger will be the winds. It is the coriolis force which makes the wind turn through 90 degree to the right in the northern hemisphere and finally make it blow straight and parallel to isobars. So reduction in coriolis force will result in smaller degree of turning of winds and thereby will allow winds to blow from high to low pressure area at some angle. An increase in coriolis force will tend to make the wind blow along isobars and reduction in coriolis force will tend to make the wind blow across isobar from high to low pressure area reduction in speed causes a reduction in coriolis force and a reduction in coriolis force results in backing of winds in northern hemisphere 
In northern hemisphere, surface winds over land is backed by 30 degree and speed is reduced by 50 percent. Over sea, the friction is less, so speed is reduced to 70 percent of original value and backing is only by 10 degree as compared to geostrophic wind. You need to remember these figures and values for the purpose of examination. Opposite effects will happen in southern hemisphere. Basically, the backing will change to veering and the rest of the figures will remain same. You can practically draw the diagram yourself using high pressure area, low pressure area, isobars, pressure gradient force, Coriolis force. Notice the change in Coriolis force and accordingly see the effect on wind direction and solve the questions related to veering and backing of winds yourself and you don't have to mug it up. Daily variation of surface winds. During daytime, earths get heated up and in turn it heats up the air in contact with the ground. Air rises upwards after getting heated up and meets the faster moving geostrophic wind above friction layer. And by coming in contact with faster wind, surface wind also gets accelerated. So surface wind will speed up during daytime when temperature rises. And the maximum strength of surface wind is at 1500 hours of local time when the temperature is maximum. Now with increase in wind speed, the Coriolis force will increase, which will make the wind turn more to get it parallel to isobar. So the surface wind will veer in northern hemisphere during day as the day progresses towards 1500 hours. In night, in night there is cooling of earth and subsidence. So no mixing of surface wind with geostrophic wind above friction layer. So surface wind will slow down as compared to daytime. Minimum speed will occur at dawn, approximately half an hour after sunrise, when the temperature is minimum. And reduction in wind speed means reduction in Coriolis force. So the wind tend to blow across isobars and so it will back. Again, instead of mugging it up, just draw diagrams yourself and calculate the result for every situation. Maximum strength of surface wind is at 1500 hours local time when temperature is maximum and minimum speed during dawn, half an hour after sunrise when temperature is minimum. So hope this video has helped you in understanding the topic of surface winds with absolute clarity. With this we have arrived at our destination. Subscribe to the channel for more such informative videos on aviation. Follow me on Instagram link as shown on the screen. Do not forget to comment below how did you like the video or if you want me to cover a specific topic. Hope to see you on board again for the next flight. Till then happy landings.